Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. We're on to the second expansion of Dawn of War, and this is Dark Crusade. I'll go ahead and play the intro for you now. In the name of the Emperor, finish this! <laughs> Alright, so we can play as one of seven factions through the campaign. And I ran a community poll, and my channel members have decided that I will be playing as the Tau for this playthrough. Canonically, the winners are actually the Blood Ravens, but I don't think that's really that important. The Tau and the Necrons are the two new factions added with Dark Crusade, so I think it's good that we're playing as one of those. The campaign also functions very differently than, uh, than how Winter Assault was created. It's interesting how Winter Assault felt a little more modern, even though it was an earlier expansion with how the maps were designed. Whereas now, I think there are fewer map events. It's more just a lot of skirmish maps, but also there's a strategic player deciding where we go and how we conquer the world map. I don't really know much about how the campaign works. We'll figure it out as we go. I have done a little research into how to play as the Tau, but of course, we'll use some of the earlier missions perhaps to explore a bit. So send me into a new campaign, please. Thank God the, uh... The difficulties are actually named normal. Normal names for difficulty. Okay, yeah, give me give me normal, please. The planet Cronus. Beset on all sides by the tides of war, this once quiet colony became a savage battlefield. Seven armies clashed on this one world, each refusing to back down, each convinced it was in the right. From beneath the sands of Cronus's central desert came the Necrons, ancient machines bent on eradicating all life. But another evil already had its eyes on the planet. From the depths of the war, the demonic forces of chaos arrived to enforce their claim. To oppose these fearsome powers, the planet's rulers in the Tau Empire sent their elite soldiers and sophisticated battle suits into the fray. From the mighty Imperium of Man came the Imperial Guard, there to secure Cronus for the glory of the God Emperor. Like a green tide, the Orb Horde descended on Cronus, caring little for others' claims and sowing destruction in its wake. The Eldar, Ancient enemies of the Necrons emerged from their webway to pursue their own agenda on Cronus. And last came the Space Marines, finest and most uncompromising of the Imperium soldiers. Seeing a world beset by aliens and heretics, they undertook a great purge. A dark crusade had begun. It could only end with the total victory of one of these factions and the total defeat of all others. Okay. Well, it just started me on the Tau Empire, but as you can see, we can play one of any of these seven, which I think is pretty cool. If you play as the Eldar, you actually get to play as Farseer Taldir, which is a, a carry forward from Winter Assault. Canonically, the winners in Winter Assault were sort of a mixture of the Eldar and the Orcs, kind of, I think. Imperial Guard Lucas Alexander, my understanding as well as the Imperial Guard, are chasing Farseer Taldir after the events on Lorne 5 to get revenge. And then the Necrons, of course. I've heard that playing as the Necrons is quite slow, which is why I was a bit reluctant uh, to consider playing as them for this. But it's something I'd consider. There's Gorguts Edunter. I uh, would love an opportunity to play as the Orcs again. But again, we're playing as the Tau for sure. Space Marine's brother, Captain Davian Thule. He ends up in a Dreadnought in Dawn of War 2. Spoilers. I just know that because I've played that game before. So it's interesting to see that this is where Davian Thule originally was. In the uh, the game series, at least. 
But yeah, I don't know much about the Tau. Very little about the Tau, so we're gonna learn about them, I guess. You are Shas Okais, military commander of the Tau forces on Cronus. While others fight for greed, pride, or conquest, you fight for the greater good. From high-tech battle suits to fearsome auxiliaries, your forces stand ready to reclaim Cronus for the Tau Empire. Ethereal Shioris has declared that you must push back the invaders. You will not fail. Send me in. The rise of the Necrons and the arrival of other powers on Cronus was a threat the Tau Empire could not ignore. With their doctrine built firmly around the so-called greater good, the Tau could not tolerate seeing a thriving colony taken away from them. The Ethereals, leaders of the Empire, responded to the distress signals from Cronus by sending some of their best and brightest to retake the world. Aunel Shores was among the most lauded of a new generation of the ethereal cast. He would be responsible for restoring proper order to this wayward world. With him came the military leader, Shas Okais, a student of the teachings of Commander Puretide. Okais brought a massive force of firecast warriors, as well as auxiliaries from the Tau's allied races, the Krut and the Vespid. Tau ground forces landed in the city of Tashin, or Ashadis, to use its true Imperial name. And from there began the crusade to retake the planet as a whole. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, just just right into it, I guess. So, this is us, and it looks like we have to choose one of these places. Welcome to the single player campaign oh, good. of Dawn of War: Dark Crusade. These tutorial windows will guide you through the first two turns of play and introduce key features of this all-new campaign mode. Your Divide into 25 provinces. I know the guy's speaking, but I, I think I can read this faster than they're speaking to me. Provinces. One province at a time. Conquest of the Individual well, battles are fought on smaller scale map time. battles. This sure, sure. This is your stronghold or home province. It is from here that you are launching your conquest of Cronus. If your stronghold is ever conquered, you will be pushed from Cronus and lose the campaign. Since this is the first turn, this is the only province you currently control. The enemy factions each have their own strongholds identified by banners on the Conquer campaign. all six of the heavily defended the strongholds. The indicates the current position of your main army. You can only attack a province that borders the province where your army is, so its position on the map defines your options. The enemy factions each have armies of their own, and also can only attack adjacent provinces. One of your enemies, however, controls a spaceport in the Pavonis province, he can attack all over the map. So we kind of want to prioritize getting the Pavonis province if possible so that we can go anywhere as opposed to only adjacent tiles, I guess? Which one is Pavonis, though? Like, I, I can't go These here, but I kind of want to see. Your army can move or attack this turn. Red arrows indicate attacks. So red is move, provinces. green, or red is attack, green, green is move. Arrows indicate moves into friendly provinces. You must attack an enemy province. Since this is your first turn, and you only control your stronghold, you must attack an enemy province. To move to, or attack... Okay, I, I, I can figure that out. I just wanted to click on the province to see... Ah, okay, actually... I just clicked randomly, and there's the spaceport. Requires control of Pavonis. Gains control of a sophisticated navigation system, allowing long-range flights to avoid anti-aircraft fire. Allows attacking almost any province on the map, regardless of adjacency. Cannot be used to attack strongholds, which have heavy anti-aircraft cover. Okay, cool. So, we still need our army in place. We are right smack dab in the middle of everybody. Eldar to the northwest. Looks like Space Marines to the northeast. Imperial Guard over here on the coast. Necrons pretty close to us, right here in the middle. And then down here is Chaos, I think, on this peninsula. And then down here in the bottom left is Gorguts. I think that's everybody. Is there someone else up here that I'm that I'm missing? No, I don't think so. So where do we want to go? What does this one actually mean? Like let's let's click here. The thing is, if we go here, we only have two ways, or I guess three provinces, four provinces to attack. We couldn't go straight to this orc one, I suspect. Whereas if we go to this five, yes, yeah, strength. What does that mean, though? Military strength, the measure of how entrenched a province owner is. 
When attacking provinces with higher military strengths, you will face more skilled and more numerous foes. Okay, the thing is, going to this five gives us way more options. And, again, I really don't know what this five really means. Also, there's this requisition. The amount of planetary requisition you can gain each turn by controlling this province. What is, um... I, mean, we, I, I gotta look a little bit around here. Yeah, give me this, this, uh, this recon. Recon and army. I think this is one where basically you, you post groups of units at places that you have, uh, you've taken. So, like, if this I go to reinforce... To garrison troops in a province. These troops will be ready when you fight to defend this province from enemy attacks. Stationing troops in a province costs you planetary requisition. The available units are on the panel. Later, you can recall these troops if the province is no longer at risk. Recalling a unit will give you back half the planetary requisition you spent to station it in the first place. Be careful. All your purchases will be final once you accept the changes on this screen. Okay, well, I'm assuming in the first turn that we're not going to be getting attacked in our, in our stronghold. What's this archive? So I think this is just some information on the specific province that we have selected. Again, do I need to, should I be using this requisition for anything? You earn more each turn for more provinces you control. So you you gain the requisition and then you can use it maybe to build an army to attack and or defend. What's this commander? Again, we got to we got to check this stuff out. Commander. This screen provides you with a snapshot of your progress in conquering the planet Cronus. It includes a running tally of your conquests your commander statistics, your honor guard, and more. If you haven't yet trained an honor guard unit, or you've lost one in battle, you can train it on this screen by simply clicking on its icon. Okay. You can also... So it looks like our hero's gonna get better and better as this goes as on as well. more and more provinces, you'll be awarded pieces of special equipment for your commander. This equipment is called war gear. You will never be awarded a specific piece of war gear. Instead, for each award, you get to choose one piece from the list on this screen. Note that you may have to get some pieces of war gear to unlock other, more powerful versions. Okay, interesting. So we can we can give him extra stuff as time goes on. Reveals infiltrated units. Reduces damage. Stealth field. Shield drone, gun drone. Interesting. Okay, well, just something to keep in mind. Obviously, we don't have anything available to us right now. We probably should just should just go. Look, the pragmatist in me says go to this level one strength, but the who dares wins. Wacky J Barino, 2022 J Barino. If you recall from my 2022 update video where I said 2022 year for the channel is going to be just try it and see what happens, says we go to this five strength. What is this bonus? We get a Vespid Elder Strain Honor Guard unit. Strain formed entirely of Elder Sting whim Wings from Vespid itself, sent to protect the colony of Cronus. So my understanding here, there are these two. Uh, client races, I guess, that are part of the Tau Empire. It's like these flying bugs, and then these, uh, I don't know, like primate creatures, I suppose is what they are. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then the Tau themselves. And the Tau specialize in really long-range combat. And then he, they have these two client races to sort of fill in the gaps, specifically, I think, for like melee and scouting and stuff. We'll see. Um, you know what? I don't know if this bonus means we get these things, or this is what we gain for attacking this as part of our honor guard. You know what? Send me in. This screen shows you the forces you are leading into an attack and allows you to return to the campaign map if you decide you want to attack later. Since this is your first attack, most options aren't yet available. When you're ready to attack, just click on the attack button. This will take you to the battle map where you will face enemies in a game of Dawn of War. Okay, so again, I've not played as the Tau, I know a little bit. They don't have turrets for, for you to build. You can just upgrade the listening post to have some guns, but they don't have separate turrets. That's going to be tough. I know that their infantry is really strong. I know they have a mid-game tech split where you have to choose one type of base upgrade or another, and they each give you alternate, alternating things. Um, but we can try both out because we've got a bunch of different battles here. Uh, you know what? Let's go. It's been a long intro. I would like to start this and just see what there is to do. I'm a little nervous. Well, who who owns this area? Was it the Necrons or was it the Orcs? 
Start mission. Okay, just like that, we're in. There's Shaso Kais. Workers. Capture points while infiltrated. Get me one of those. Worker, go ahead and build me um, a barracks, please. And then we'll start capturing these points that are right by us. There's one. The question is, where's the enemy? Can we use uh, Shaso Kais to go and maybe look around the map? The fact that this... Oh, no, that's just water. I was going to say, maybe that implies that they're up there, but I have no idea. Plasma generator me? Give me two, actually. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, so we're just going to... We're just going to do our best. Is this... He's, he's capturing that right there. Barracks is done. So we'll get that listening post. Fire Warrior teams. My understanding is these are just the really long-range base guys. So let's get a group of those. And our listening post is coming up. This is a cool-looking group. Increases damage of all stealth suit weapons. Gives them... Jetpacks allows Vespid Stingwings to buzz across the battlefield. Detects infiltrated units. Okay, again, we have a lot of options. Fire team, go ahead and just get kitted up. We can get Kroot Carnivore Squad. So this is like our melee corpse. Corpse, I just was reading. Can cannibalize corpses to gain health. That's like our melee group. I'm going to get another group of these ranged fellows. Path to Enlightenment is probably our upgrade building, if I had to guess. Let's go ahead and listening post this up once we have enough requisition for it. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop building more guys in these groups. Cancel that. I would like to get these listening posts first and foremost. Maybe we can grab another guy to go and scout for us, because you know what. You go ahead and scout up there, and maybe we can get another one to go and scout in the other direction. I'd like to just move up and try and secure some of these forward... Well, I don't know what counts as forward. Back here, maybe, as well? It's just destroy enemy HQ buildings. I, I wonder if that's going to be the whole game, but I sort of doubt it. Path to Enlightenment. Let's go ahead and make the two that we have fortified. Oh, Shasso Case, I just said, I just saw, has no melee attack. Effective against all unit types. Use snare, use snare traps? Go ahead and snare me. High powered shot that can pierce almost any armor type. Left quick click to target enemy squad. Okay, let's go up and get this. We would like that Path of Enlightenment soon as well. Like, I'm looking for an enemy base. There is a Necron Lord. I sort of hate that. The fact that he's up here to me means the enemy must be in this general direction, I would imagine. I'm going to get another worker as well. Oh, they're already coming. Dude, snare trap. Get him. Upgrade this. And yeah, I don't, I don't have turrets, keep in mind. Now nah, we don't need a snare trap then. Target acquired. Go ahead and blast them. These, uh... I like these ranged guys. They seem pretty strong. Oh, there's, uh... There's the enemy hero, unfortunately. He appears to be running away. My, these dudes kind of have to set up similar to heavy bolters. Interestingly enough. Okay, why don't you come on back and maybe try and cap this relic and we'll try and move forward towards the enemy bases. Trying to do a little bit with very little here. We need more generators as well. Jetpacks. Vespid Stingwing. I need this Path of Enlightenment as well. Go ahead and snag this. I guess one of you snag that. You're going to grab the uh, the altar as well. I'm going to get this path to enlightenment because that seems like our typical upgrade structure that's going to require what we need to get to our next level of tech. There's no town hall upgrade. My understanding is you get these command posts down here, but you can only pick one of them. 
vehicle beacon, thermo generator. Crute Shaping Center builds Crute units. Again, that's one of our client races, or at least that's my understanding. I'm going to get a Crute squad because we need a little melee coverage. What's our next target? And I'm just capping these so that we can get some additional uh, requisition. The critical points give requisition. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure they, they do. Fruit squad coming up. Path to Enlightenment coming up. And we're going to need some more plasma generators and then we can get some upgrades on our uh, from our Path to Enlightenment. Pathfinder team. So my understanding, again, I only know, I know very little with how this is, but I think what you do is you use the Pathfinders to give you a forward vision. There's our Crute Carnivore Squad. And then these dudes have super long range as long as you give them line of sight, which the Recon Squad can do. We need the Path to Enlightenment for that. Broadside team, dual missile launchers. Minimum range are effective against all targets. Can become rail guns. Okay, all right, all right. That's coming up still. This is done. Let's go ahead and get this to be a fortified position. Let's fortify our relic. I'm going to send this dude maybe up to the left. I'm looking for the Necron base. I'm going to get another... That scared me. Okay, this is fine. Stealth suits become highly accurate. Increases damage and range of fire warriors. That sounds delightful. Missile barrage ability on Skyray Missile Carrier. Enables Crute Carnivores and Hounds to close on enemy units with powerful leaps. That sounds nice. Okay, let's get a Pathfinder team and bring them up here. And again, we're trying to move out and scout a little bit. I did snag this too. Probably want to go and maybe grab a few more points that are behind us. Here's the what appears to be the Necron base. Don't Don't die though. No reason that you should throw your life away. Go and cap some new points. We found where they are, so we could probably just sit here. My understanding is you can't build listening posts on the critical points, but I think those still provide, um, not supply, but, um, requisition. Generators, please. And I don't know if this is a good opportunity to just build the crap out of this faction to see what we can do versus trying to go and win fairly early. Lead the way. Mark squad. Become more vulnerable to fire from all Tau units. Got it. Okay. Go ahead and add people to this group. We will get all the details. Yes. And then these dudes should be able to leap. We got this cannibalize. Increases the health of all your cannibals, like their maximum health? Is that what that means increases damage of all stealth suits i guess we, we can we can get this dude leveled up stealth suit chasse i don't know man these dudes are our scouts so it doesn't seem super important to get this group like this squad like fully leveled up but i guess we can do it assuming we we get enough strategic points you know just using double workers to set these up. We could also go for vehicles here pretty soon. They have not attacked us for at all, really. Let's get our last generator. There's really no other upgrades at the at the, the path of enlightenment that I want. So these two require the Kalyan command post, and these basically make give us like way more health and better range on our uh, on these ranged guys. Is my understanding. Go ahead and get me a broad side team, please, when we can afford it. Okay, they don't they don't seem to like us taking you know what? I'm gonna go and contest this. Cause that's their worker, isn't it? Oh, poor workers, run. Well, we can come up here and take this. I'll just move up and contest this, cause why not? Kinda curious to see how we'll do. It's just us versus Necron Lord. That's that's literally his name, Necron Lord. Um, I'm going to turn these into, like, super heavy fortified positions. It's expensive, but I think it'll be worth it. I don't know what he's doing here, but I hate it. 
we don't appear to be taking... Oh, you know what? I think it actually, like, blacked out our vision on the map, weirdly enough. Okay. I'm going to come down and retake this. I'm not sure what that's doing. Okay, let's get some broadside teams, I suppose. Full-scale war. And plasma battery storage. For that sweet income. And then next, we want to either go... Kalyan or Vehicle Beacon. Kalyan's like our tier two um, town, town hall upgrade, I think. Okay, you love to see it. Upgrade there. Again, I think they were trying to take these. There's so many areas behind my base. I, instead, I ended up taking the stuff in front of them. EMP grenade. Disables vehicle fire and movement. That's really good, actually. Yo, that's not what I expected this thing to be. Then we can entrench them. And then they can do a ton of damage in general, I suppose. We're going to finish this, and then we'll build some more stuff in the front. Let's get our... Oh, gosh. Let's get that Kroot Center. Again, This is where we can explore a little bit to see what's available for us. Dude, these listening posts that are super upgraded are enormous. Like, ridiculously enormous. Minimum range. Okay, okay. Let's get a Fire Warrior team. And then we'll see what is available at the Fruit Shaping Center. And let's get that Kalyan Command Center. Again, we'll do both. My understanding is the Montica one gives you access to these really good tanks. Again, we'll worry about that later. Now we can add Fire Warriors, which let them throw grenades and you get an extra dude, or Energy Shields. Dude, don't speak to me about Energy Shields. The whole idea is these, these dudes are supposed to be in the back, so just give me the, the Fire Warriors, please. And we got our Snare Traps and all that. Uh, I'm a little concerned that the neck. Well, we're like right outside the Necron base, honestly. Let's get another barracks out here. Kalyan Command Force. Okay, and then we got a Kroot Shaper. Improves speed and health of squad. It's a commander unit. Commands Kroot Car. Oh, we have a Carnivore squad. I can't get Hound Packs or Krutox or Greater Narlac without. Oh, this is teaching us of Kalyan, not the Kalyan command post, but there are some units that are exclusive to the Kalyan stuff. Again, I'm sort of I'm sort of taking my time here because I'm trying to learn the options we that we have. Let's bring our army over here and maybe we could start even sieging sieging the, the main base here. Actually, we're at the we're at the population cap here. We need ve vehicles are our, really our only option. Oh, we've got our crew shaper now, so let's go ahead and add the shaper to our crew squad. Together, we will be them all. There's the you know, and I can build a vehicle, whatever, over here. Um. I am a little nervous just because, like, again, the Necrons might have expanded, like, all the way down here. I hope not. I have no idea what they could have at this point. Yes, sir. It looks like we actually have to go down and around to get to them anyway, because we can't walk down that 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 ledge. So let's go down here and bring everybody. We'll get some vehicles. And I'll upgrade all of these just in case they go around us, because they might. Kalyan Command Post. I guess get this Missile Barrage ability. I don't really care about the Stealth Suit accuracy, but I guess I'll, I'll get that upgrade. And again, this is just to make sure that they can't go around us. If anything, this upgrade increases our requisition, which we don't really need, but it also allows us to... Okay, it looks like they are moving out here. Oh, it's our stealth team. 
Okay, the Necron Lord is up here, so I guess we have to turn around and, and hit this thing. I'd like to kill this Necron Lord, and then we'll go from there. What are these? Wraiths? He's attacking my vehicle beacon. Devilfish Troop Carrier I never care about. Drone Squad? Can burrow into the ground and ambush passing units. Effective against infantry. Explodes violently when killed. Missile Gunship? Give it to me. Mobile Drone Hanger. Can launch drones to harass enemies. Limited charge to power their weapons and propulsion systems. Just give me some of these missile systems, honestly. We're wasting this guy? We're totally wasting him. And I think he's he's just gone. Can we I was gonna say, can we cannibalize him? Because that would be funny. You needed fire support. Teachings of, of Kalyan, sure. That allows us to get our super unit. Let me just actually read this. Advances them down the path of Kalyan, Crotox, and Greater Narlock. Then we want to get Metallurgy and Targeting Optics. So this one is just straight up way more health on stuff. It looks like dramatically increases maximum health. And then Range and Line of Sight of Fire Warriors, which is kind of our main jam are those Fire Warriors. So let's get more of those. I see a large army... Missile Barrage. I see a large army that are... They're retaking this up here, so let's push this army back. Yeah, sure. Give me a Drone Harbinger as well. Okay, these guys, you need to back up. This is not how I, I wanted to use you. These these weird rates are strange to me. The idea is I wanted to kind of stay back. Dude, the Necron Lord is already back. Okay, back up, back up. Where's my actual hero? Because he doesn't have a he doesn't have a melee attack. Yeah, launch the drones. They have they have the, the uh, you know not. Dude, the Necron Lord is already back. Okay, back up, back up. Where's my actual hero? Because he doesn't have a he doesn't have. Can we, like, maybe snare this guy? These dudes are still stealth. We did kill their vehicles. This dude is tanking for the crap out of things for them. Let's get another crew squad, because I think ours died. The patient hunter gets the prey. And, yeah, these these broadsides are not meant, to, I think, to be tanking things. I'm not so sure. Again, we're going to go straight for the enemy base once this is done. Groot and Tau. Groot and Tau doing stuff. Okay, we got them. Let's go ahead and move down and take care of these things. These dudes have been stealth the whole time and they're doing great, so I, I don't regret I don't regret anything. Focus down these vehicles. Okay, everybody move on up. We're going for this base now. And we'll burrow our dudes into the ground. Can these guys repair my battle suits? No, they cannot. The battle suits cannot be repaired, it would appear. We're trying to move up with everybody. That might take some time. Give me a missile gunship as well. Just keep building those. That seems good. I think the, the guys that are supposed to be giving us range are no longer alive, but we can move forward with these folks. Just go ahead and entrench here. I'm kind of curious to see if your range from here is good enough. Tau 
to hit these structures. XV-88 battlesuits ready for you action. needed fire support? It looks like no, I had really hoped. Okay, everybody move up. Less missile barrage here, sure. Yo, that's pretty cool. Did they destroy that straight up? Like, whatever they did... Launch the drones? I have plenty of power to do that with. Yeah, they're like little carriers, basically. Keep bombarding them? Necron Lord is not defending his base, so you know what? That's fine. Hammerhead gunship seems like, yeah, the, it's the other path that we can take. But look at the range on these guys. Like, they, they can shoot from so far away. I'm just going to keep moving up with everybody and just assume that we're pretty much fine. Okay, move forward here. I think we did a pretty... We got a pretty good intro to this, uh... A pretty good intro to this, uh, to this faction this time around. Move forward a little bit. Like, they they don't have insanely unlimited range, but it's still pretty high. Dude, look at those, yeah, look at those, uh, the rail gun. Okay, go ahead and entrench. Goss turret. I'm just gonna go ahead and destroy this, uh, yeah, destroy their town, town hall, I guess. The patient hunter gets the brain. Nice. Okay, back him up. Okay, it looks like they must have another one. Keep moving forward. I kind of want to get another recon squad. That's fine. You know what? You can have that. I'll just build another one. Give me some more workers, please. Could check out this this Vespid Stingwing strain as well. Dude, now I can get the the Narlac. The greater Narlac. Let's do that. Crew talks can has the strength to destroy heavy vehicles and can take enormous punishment and disrupt infantry. I like that. Dude, get out of here, dude. We need to be able to detect stealth for this dude cuz he's constantly just wrecking havoc. Okay, let's keep moving forward. They must be building another town hall somewhere. And they've got something that does a ton of damage as well. Moving these things up, they're kind of like siege tanks. They take a long time to set up, but it doesn't seem like they have nearly as long of a range as I thought. What happened to your... Why are... Why did you lose morale? Oh, they've got another one up there. All right, battle suits. Let's move you up here. And I wish I could I could get an indication of what their range actually is once they get settled into the ground. I'll be honest. I'm actually glad I'm playing as the town because I don't want I wouldn't want to play against them. I feel like the AI would be really awful with them. These oh I. So, I don't know, do they, they, they like move in and then they blow up? It's like an infantry disruption type thing, maybe? Even just having one crew squad seems nice. Yo! Get up here and, and kill these things. If these things keep coming alive and I don't know how to stop them from coming back alive. That's a problem. Looks like this wasn't even fully built because they were rebuilding it, but at the very least, we're all good. Can you guys hit this? Yes. What about you? Oh, okay, well, instant, very quick, like, boom, you won. We got some war gear, and we got a Vesper Elder Strain, an honor guard unit. I think that means that you start the next mission with them. Now, my goal is to do multiple missions in one video in the future, but this was obviously a learning experience. We watched the opening cutscenes. We learned a little bit about, you know, how the the map works. I'll go back to the map. I'm sure it'll tell us more because it said they'll walk us through the first two turns. But uh, great work. Great work uh, against the Necrons here. Necrons seem a little spicy. 
They can take a, a ton of damage, though. The Tau seems like you set up that battle line, and as long as you can get vision, you've got some stealth units, you've got some recon units with long line of sight, your range dudes can just take stuff out from forever away. we got plenty of siege, long-range siege weaponry that can destroy bases without even necessarily needing to walk into them. Though, I do feel like orcs would be a, a challenge for us because we don't have great melee options unless we go heavy into the Kroot side of things, which does seem like the Kalyan tech path is the right one. Though, I like the idea of the, the other tanks that we can get. Supposedly, those other tanks you can take by going the other path are just all well-rounded tanks. So, anyway, um, what did we... Oh, we got one... We got one... Uh, one war gear. Each of the following accomplishments. Three to one kill ratio. Jeez. Okay. Send me back. Click any of the above to see more information so we can pick any of these. Getting a flamer on him could be pretty good. Melting through building and vehicle armor. Massive damage to unprotected troopers. Missile pods. Anti-vehicles. Honestly, revealing infiltrated units seems pretty good. I think I saw it was the recon units can can see infiltrated stuff, but getting the recon units and keeping them alive seems kind of a challenge. Uh, but we're going to need them for line of sight anyway. Reduces damage greatly. Greatly increases health. I don't really care about jetpacks or stealth fields. Shield drones could be pretty good. Can train gun drones. Requires shield drones. I see. I didn't realize some of these required other ones. You know what? Give me this sensor array. Just the, the health increase plus being able to see stealth stuff. I mean, if we fight the Necrons again, I want to be able to see that Necron Lord. Um, so I guess all we can... Um, what about... Do we want to reinforce? You have conquered your first province. This victory has given you several rewards including a piece of war gear and a bonus from the province. Every province on the map has a special bonus. This bonus is displayed in the right-hand panel when you select the province. Some provinces give you the ability to train a special unit for your commander's honor guard. Once trained, these units accompany your commander into the initial stages of battle. You can train these units or retrain them if they are destroyed in battle from the commander screen or the attack screen. Other provinces give you special abilities, like the Eris Badlands, which gives you the ability to attack twice per turn. That seems really important too. So we want the spaceport and the air is bad this land. We have to the find that them. You've just conquered. Notice that it has changed to your color. That your army is now here. Whenever you conquer a province, your army moves to that province. You can only move or attack once per turn. So your turn is effectively over. Next turn, new provinces will be available for you to attack. When you are ready to let the enemy factions act, click on the end turn button. So I guess when you end turn, then they have the opportunity, their armies have the opportunity to move into your provinces. So technically, the Necrons could just come and try and retake this from us. I, I guess. Now, just because I'm curious. Again, so we'd have to spend this requisition in order to, to get extra... I think the idea is you sort of... You build units here to sort of defend this from right at the beginning of the map. So if the Necrons attacked us, we would at least have some requisition allocated here such that we can ensure that it's defended, I guess. At least from the start. In theory, we can build whatever we want in the mission itself. But this is just like you start with those units, I suppose. Is the archive... Yeah, the archive is actually different for each of these. So what are those, where, where are the Badlands? The Pavonian Heartland, Agmar Desert, Hyperion Peaks, Gorguts' Zwa. This is really neat. Increase manpower. Support more troops on the field. Increases your squad cap and stuff. This is, this is really interesting. I like how each area gives you something. And it does feel like what we got here for the Honor Guard is kind of kind of a bummer, but you know, that's fine. Um, I guess take me to the commander screen so we can train the elder strains so that we start with them for requisition. Honestly, yes, let's do that, and now they will permanently be with us unless they die. 
But, dude, it's like Battle for Middle Earth. I love the persistent army stuff. I'm a really big fan of that. It's hard to balance a game around it, but I just love it so much. Um, I want to find... Where's the area... That would let us attack twice per. Croot, Alpha... Veteran Stealth... Forward Base? No, that's Hyperion Peaks. Huh. I don't know. I feel like I clicked on most of these. It was like the Badlands or something, right? That spaceport, honestly, is looking real juicy. We did fine with the level 5 Necrons. It was a little spiced, but we did okay. Let's end the turn and see what happens. Each of the enemy factions will now act in turn. Like you, they each have their own strongholds and armies. They will each move their armies, or attack and reinforce their provinces in turn. Pay attention to where your enemy's armies are. Armies will reinforce nearby friendly provinces under attack, bolstering the defense with additional troops. So a lot of this, I think, comes down to, the strategic layer comes down to how much you start with at any given map. And if you start with a ton, then obviously that gets you off the ground way faster, and you can get into higher tech in order to start attacking the enemy and end maps faster before things get out of hand. Now there are two of them, etc., etc. Imperial Guard attacking Chaos. Necrons attacking Orcs and not us, thankfully. Looks like Imperial Guard failed. It is now your turn to act again. You'll notice that you have gained planetary requisition from the provinces you control. Each province produces planetary requisition every turn. You use planetary requisition to reinforce your provinces by stationing troops there and to train honor guard units. To reinforce a province, simply left-click on a province you own, and then click on the Reinforce button in the right-hand panel. Okay, but like, do we want to do that? So like, even just getting an extra worker here... ...seems like a great idea, and you know, something like this, where we get like one ranged group and then like one worker... ...would make me feel a lot better. But the question is, actually, cancel this. Oh, okay, so Gorguts is adjacent to us. So he could technically attack us next turn. The Necrons also are still adjacent. Well, the Necrons are still in their home base, I think. It's interesting how they were able to move, and then they just moved their armies back, weirdly enough. Gorguts is now in, uh, in the level 1 area, so if we attack this, we could maybe take out Gorguts straight- I don't think that's how that works. It would force him to just move, if I had to guess. I'm still looking for that one area where supposedly... Oh, you know what? It's possible it's probably under the recon or something. Like, some of these, uh... Vandian Coast... The something north, the green coast... Whatever. Okay, I'll worry about that another time. We'll decide where to go next time. Um, but again, I think I kind of get a general sense of what's going on here. We probably just want to continue being uh, aggressive into enemy territory. Going for the spaceport seems like a great idea. And that would actually poise us to either go f for the Space Marine main base. We could also go straight for the Necron main base. Um, I don't know what realistically we need to win some of these these missions, though, to be honest. So... Uh, bear with me. We're going to do a little learning. Only one mission for today, but like I said in the future, my goal is to smash through provinces maybe at a slightly faster rate. Alright, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.